Speak, God. <laughs> it's funny, I uh, was sharing this one in, uh, oh, I don't know, it must have been 98 degrees out here at the time when I was sharing it, and <laughs> it was tough because it happened to be one that got long-winded, and uh, it wasn't me, but it was the particular devotional, and uh, gosh, I was sweating, but you know, that's such a joy, you know, is that to be able to take now, this time, as opposed to in the daytime, and to relax and to still drink coffee, but to share God and Jesus who sits here with me every day of my life and spend quality time in the morning, in the evening, in between times, all through the day and night, and in Speak God, which I haven't looked at. I'm not going to ever read another long one like that last one. <laughs> but I enjoy being able to relate my experiences like my back going out and having to suffer through the challenges of sharing a commitment that I've made, you know, with you, but with God to read these, you know, and to share them. And when things come up like, oh, I don't know, throwing your back out or, or you know, being in pain or, you know, being weary from the exertion that, you know, when you don't take pain med or something, I mean, I don't get me wrong, if I had it, I'd take it, but <laughs> I don't need it that bad right now. But the point is, is that pain can wear you down after a while where you need a nap and, you know, it, it gets you to a comfortable place of peace that if you learn to endure it, you know, as a servant, that God will use it sometimes to refresh you even and to bring in more of his spirit that you'd be able to endure the pain. Now, that may not be true for everyone, but anyways, I've just experienced so much suffering in my life at different years and stuff that pain is a fun subject <laughs> so anyways it's probably not something you want to hear so let's hear what the lord would say for those that were and have been in years of suffering you know what i mean when you're rejected or laughed at have you ever felt like a loser have you ever felt yourself in a situation where you looked like a loser and felt like a loser it's hard isn't it Christians can look like losers, too. I remember a different, a difficult situation my husband, Jack, and I faced several years ago. It was probably the hardest thing we had ever faced together. Jack and I found ourselves in circumstances which made us and our Christianity look like real losers, real failures. We were in an environment so contrary to our Christian beliefs and way of life that it was like being in a foreign land and realizing you couldn't communicate with the people because you didn't speak the same language. It was a real culture shock, to say the least. This situation was hard enough, but it was nothing in comparison to the times that followed. We looked like losers. We were denounced as losers. And those who were associated with us were to be most pitied. I thought my heart would break. And then God took me to the cross. As I read through and poured over the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, my Heavenly Father reminded me that he had called me to the cross. Death to self death to the opinions and affections of others, even those closest to me, death to my dreams, my hopes, my desires, death to self. Jesus Christ alone is to be my one desire, his life and not my own. I am to love him above all else and above all others. And if his choices are to be made, I must choose him and his truth no matter what I lose, no matter how often I am thought a loser. Then my Heavenly Father reminded me of what his own son had experienced. Suspended between heaven and hell, Jesus found no comfort and no comforter. His friends had forsaken him. One had even betrayed him. The Jews who had called for his crucifixion taunted him. The criminals cursed him. The son refused its light. Then his own father forsook him. As Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for you and me and for those who think we are losers. 
So much had been expected of him, so much had been proclaimed about him. And there he hung in the midst of common criminals, raw, beaten, bloody, gasping for breath, and crying out that he was thirsty, even though he had claimed to be the fountain of living waters. Jesus didn't look like the King of Kings that day. Jesus looked like the loser of all losers. But the end of the story hadn't been told, and neither was the end of your story or mine. I didn't know what your pain, I don't know what your pain is. I don't know what your failure to deal with, what inadequacies you wrestle with, what shattered hopes or dreams plague you, what wrong judgments haunt you. But I can tell you this, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you may look like a loser, you may be called a loser, you may be despised, rejected, laughed at, scorned, talked about, deemed a loser, but you're not. The final chapter hasn't been written yet. While you are not perfect any more than any other child of God is perfect, you belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to God. You've been redeemed from the slave market of sin, bought by His precious blood. You've been made part of a kingdom of priests who will reign with Him when He comes as a King of kings and Lord of lords. As children of God, we're not losers. We're winners simply by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, live in that rest of faith. He who is coming will soon come. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain, and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. You know, I am fascinated that she brings up that idea of being a loser was that as much as my life has been <laughs> very Jesus gypsy like, there was always deep inside me that desire and that want to feel something more like I wasn't a loser or that somehow, you know, I could succeed like I had seen all my other friends do. They had all become pastors of great mega churches. They had all done marvelous works for God. They had all gone on and, you know, most of them had rock solid marriages and they had beautiful children and they were just going on with the idyllic setting that I thought you know was so perfect that everyone else seemed to have and I didn't think that I was much of anything but a loser and so in each and every person that you look at whatever you consider them to be some icon of the faith you may find that deep inside that they too have had to experience that shedding of self and crucified self to find that Jesus is all that they want and all that they need. Isn't that true with you today? Isn't that what you want today? I think so. I think that if today you sat down and looked at your own life and the successes that you think you have or the worries or anxieties that plague you, you'll find that the one thing that is most needful and you're proud of is a salvation that was given to you that you had absolutely nothing to do with. And that's from God. So, if I can offer you any advice that I can tell you in this life, you will quit feeling like a loser. It's just simply to be <laughs> seeking Jesus. And one day you'll wake up like I did and you'll realize, hey, I'm not a loser after all. It may not be today, but you're on your way.